Hey guys, before I get to my video, let me say a few things. I had a vote on both my YouTube and on my Twitter on whether to have a quick review in the beginning of my video, like usual, so that I don't spoil the whole thing for you guys, while still doing like a light spoil or a heavy spoil episode. And the votes together showed that this is going to be a pretty heavy video, but first let's do the quick review. I had fun with it, but like most Sonic games, there are problems with it. While I think overall it's still a good game, it's just, in my opinion, not a 10 out of 10 like some places are rating it. If I had to rate it, I would say maybe it's an 8 out of 10. I wouldn't call this game the best Sonic game out there, just like how I wouldn't call Breath of the Wild the best Zelda game ever. Like if someone was new to Sonic, I wouldn't be recommending this as their first game, you know? But the story is decent, it's not the greatest, but I still think it's one of the best Sonic storylines we've gotten recently. Most likely thanks to it being written by Ian Flynn, the guy who's head writer when this certain D-bag left and is currently working with the IDW Sonic comics. If anything, this really makes me want to read those comics. So thank you, Ian Flynn, you did something in one game that DC and Marvel hasn't done in so many years, making me want to read your comics. Combat and movement is, uh, weird. I hear people say this was the best combat system ever, and... No, not really, I wouldn't really say it was that great. I found it most of the time, I didn't really have to think about it. Especially with the auto-combo talent. And while I don't think movement was terrible, at some points it felt extremely floaty and it was very aggravating on some platforming sections. Plus, most of the time Sonic felt like he was being held back with the speed, even after I maxed out my speed level. And the portal levels are 100% not needed at all to beat the game. But again, besides all that, I had an overall good time with this game. If you're a Sonic fan, I definitely recommend this game. If you're not a Sonic fan or new to the Sonic franchise, even though I recommend it still, it might be best for you to wait for a price drop. That way, if you don't enjoy it, at least it's not that big of a money loss. From here on, we're going to be entering spoiler territory. I will be talking about the story in full. I will try and keep it in order, so if you do watch it and you've only gotten so far, you can stop before it gets too far, but I really make no promises on that. If you haven't played this game yet and you don't want to be spoiled, please just pause the video, go play the game, and then come back. If you've already beaten the game, or don't care about spoilers, well, let's just get on with the review. You know, it's been about like five years since like the last Sonic game came out, unless you count Origins, that came out a few months ago. But I don't really count that since it's like just a compilation of the four games. The last time I talked about Sonic, I mentioned how he just keeps falling into various holes during his time in 3D and wondered if his new project, Sonic Frontiers, was going to get him out of it. And I think this is in the right direction. This game did help him climb out of that hole. But keep in mind, he's still currently in Hole City, and any wrong step could make him fall again. Sonic Frontiers is the first open-world game for Sonic, with Sega using it as a new template for the Sonic games, much like how Sonic Adventure was when the games were going from 2D to 3D. But this isn't the first time a game series tried to change what it was into an open world. Zelda Breath of the Wilds and Halo Infinite come to mind. And why I kind of feel like the results are similar to Halo Infinite story mode? Sonic Frontiers did it way better. The game starts with Eggman looking at some strange stone chair things. Uploading AI program now. <laughs> he does a weird Scooby-Doo laugh and some shenanigans happen. The ancient secrets will be mine. Causing him to get sucked into the chair thing. We then see Sonic, Tails, and um, uh, Amy? Really? Alright, well, they're flying over to track the Chaos Emeralds, which came to these islands, and uh, presumably stop Eggman too. And I have to say, I I'm sorry, I know Roger Craig Smith has been Sonic for like 10 years, but is it just me, or does his voice seem a little too different this time around? What I mean is, his voice seems way deeper than it is usually. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Eggman plus secretly built amusement park equals evil plot for us to foil. Lucky for us, he's not very good at keeping things hidden. The last time we met, you ruined my nail art. Now I have to reapply a whole new coat. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Mm -hmm. I am so, so sorry. Oh, well, in that case... Oh no, what I meant to say is, I'm so sorry that you have nothing more important to do in life. Oh. Uh, not another speeding ticket. I'll fight it in court, but I don't think they're gonna accept gotta go fast as a medical condition. You tracked the Chaos Emeralds here, right? Let's find out what drew them here. Tails proves once again that he is terrible at flying. <laughs> Bullshit! Well, t technically he's right, because this is what happens. They go into a portal and separate immediately, dropping us into the game. 
and immediately I have a problem. Movement is not great. Granted, I don't really know if any of these Sonic games have actually perfected the controls when it comes to Sonic Speed movements, but this one is definitely hard to get used to. Like here, for example, I'm going fast and I jump to get up here, but it's really hard to control it and I just end up jumping either over the edge or past what I was really trying to get to. This happens really throughout the entire game, but this game also doesn't have a live system, so it's not really that big of a deal overall. It's just mildly frustrating. Sometimes it just really feels like the controls are against me when this stuff happens. So Sonic wakes up on the island alone and gets sad, thinking about his friends being gone forever. But then Sonic gets called out by, I don't know, the Gaia, maybe? And we're off to explore the first island. Hello? You have done the impossible. You have escaped cyberspace through your own power. When the first gameplay trailer came out, I wasn't too impressed by it. It seems empty and boring, and overall didn't really give me hope on this game. I want to say it's basically the same, but a little bit better. Running around, it does feel like this is just like one of those Unreal Engine test things you see with Sonic. But there's also stuff happening, there are tons of enemies to fight. And there isn't a whole lot to explore. Each island boils down to a dead island with nothing really worthwhile to explore. Besides like theming and each island getting objectively worse in its design, it's basically all the same. Hell, one of the later islands, you don't even really explore it, it's just really straightforward. As you run around the island, there's little puzzles that you have to complete to show you more of the area of the map, which gives you an idea of where stuff is. Stuff like other puzzles to unlock more of the map, boss locations, stage locations, etc. I really like these. These aren't like other open world games like Assassin's Creed where all you have to do is just climb up a tower and press a button. Again, you have to do the puzzle to unlock parts of the map, and these puzzles are very easy, I'm not going to deny that. And while it is varied, they do repeat a lot, but I think it's a nice break of things and very simple to do. Sometimes, if I remember correctly, there was like one or two puzzles that frustrated me. Not that I couldn't solve it, it was just that what I had to do frustrated me to the point where I decided, you know what, it's not worth it. Being in open world, Sonic now has a skill tree with 12 talents needing to be unlocked through skill points, and 3 talents that get unlocked throughout the story's progression. And they kind of suck, besides like maybe four talents, you're not really going to use the rest of them. The first one you unlocked is the Psy Loop. You hold down the button while you run around and a blue streak speeds by. Making this like a game of Snake in those Pokemon Ranger games. You spin around in a circle to hurt enemies and to get rings. This single move basically makes combat a non-issue. I say mostly, because unless you're not paying that much attention, you're never going to run out of rings, which is Sonic's life in this game. You don't lose them all after one hit like in the old games, and spinning in a circle, no matter how small and no matter how often, you're going to get a certain amount of rings. I don't know the exact amount, but it doesn't really matter because you just get hurt, just Sonic speed in circles for 20 seconds and you fill it up in no time. In order to go into the portals again, seriously, do these not look like chairs? You need portal gears in order to access them, and how do we get said portal gears? Well, besides just randomly out in the world, you can find them by beating one of the many mini bosses in the game. Which range from, hey, that was a good fight, to this is annoying and I never want to fight this boss again. Or you could just never find out how to beat one like I did. You gotta complete the courses with certain conditions, which is like the same condition each time. Beat it with the X amount of time, beat it with an X amount of rings, get 5 red rings, which is a pain in the ass, honestly, and just finish the level. I don't really like the portal levels, in my opinion, I don't think they were thought out enough, and it kind of feels like they were brought in at the last minute. None of the stages really look that great. Sure, they have unique themes, like this one's Green Hill Zone, this one's Chemical Plant, and this one's, uh, Ancient Greece? But overall, the layouts aren't that great, and all the stages have that cyberspace outline around it. But you can beat these stages in less than a minute, making them quick to do. The only real issue I have, besides the movement I mentioned earlier, is that you have to collect the five red stars that appear as bonuses in the recent games to get a key. And I gotta say, they're not easy to spot. Sometimes there's multiple paths, and I'm always concerned I picked the wrong one, and the red star was down the other path. That is, even if I can see them and react fast enough, because if you're going too fast, you might not see them in time, because they kind of blend into the background. And I haven't even gotten to the worst part about these portal levels. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But for now, let's continue. Exploring the area some more, we pick up these skill seeds. There are two types of skill seeds in this game, one for power and one for defense. You gotta collect them to raise your damage and defense. No freaking duh. 
To actually raise your power, you gotta find this guy, a Coco Elder. This one Elder specifically upgrades your strength and defense. I honestly don't know the amount you need, or if it even increases each level, or if it even makes you at all stronger. I managed to raise it to max level, and yeah, I felt a little bit stronger, some enemies took less hits to die, but I probably could have gone through this game without leveling up and wouldn't have noticed. If you notice, that guy only leveled up two things, with four things being on the bottom left corner. That's because another Coco Elder levels the ring limit and speed. And you want to know how you level that up? The same annoying way you have to level up your inventory space in Breath of the Wilds. And it's somehow just as terrible. Throughout the game you're gonna find little Cocos out and about. Some are hidden, most are right out in the open, and you have to collect 12 to level up either ring or speed by one. At least I think it stays as needing 12 throughout this game, but man this becomes a huge problem. Even with something I'm gonna talk about later. So with the taller elder, he just takes all of your skill seeds and level you up by that much. Instantly. This guy? You have to scroll down and select it each time, and he's only gonna do it one at a time. And it's slow and painful. Why couldn't you just put in like a times counter or something? Have him say, hey, I can upgrade you this amount of times. How many times do you want the rings to upgrade? And it's a slow climb each level up as well. You only get about like a five ring increase each time, and it takes a long while to get a significant amount. And now I know what you're thinking. What the hell are the Cocos? Well, let's just continue on. So running around, we come across Amy trapped in this weird container. Like she's in the Matrix or something. Did Sonic have to go through this too? I mean, you find everyone in this. But oh well, we have to now collect hearts for Amy. Sonic frees Amy, but gets some sort of weird energy zapped into him, which gives us those talents that we have to go through the story to unlock. Right? Me? You're the one who's only half here. I feel fine, but that energy that was holding me prisoner went into you. Eh, I've been infused with weird zappy stuff before. Besides, I feel like it gave me some kind of boost. And from playing Shadows of the Colossus, I'm sure nothing bad's gonna happen from this. Next cutscene, we get attacked by a, uh, Evangelion Mecha? What? Is this actually Shadow of the Colossus? Here we are introduced to Sage, a childlike robot who controls the Titans and who tells you to leave, which Sonic promptly ignores. You leave immediately. Where'd you come from? Are you trapped too? Do not approach the Titan. Sorry, kid, but I've got a job to do. Well, that didn't work out, so we need the Chaos Emeralds to turn into Super Sonic. Got this emerald here, got this emerald here, got this emerald, but man... Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Oh, here it is. You only really have to get, like, the first four Chaos Emeralds with the keys you get from the portal stages. The other three you get through different means. The next two you get are through Amy's little side story. First, she's trying to help these Cocos find her children, which we can help through a minigame hurting 50 Cocos while avoiding bombs that they are dropping. Those little shits. What? That's the Chaos Emerald. Now I know what's going on. The military has mistaken me for the likes of you. So. Where do you think you're going with that emerald? Say something, you fake hedgehog! Sonic gets the emerald, does a little stupid dance, and now we have five emeralds. Doll, oh, this is adorable. A mom and a child reunited. I sure hope nothing bad's gonna happen to them. Ha! Huh. So they just died. That's interesting. Uh, Sonic doesn't seem to care, though. Let's keep moving. I want to wrap up our time here ASAP. Next, we gotta to talk to Amy a few more times. It's extremely easy to get the heart tokens, you need to continue the story. You find them in little treasure spots around the island, and just sometimes when you do the side loop. So I never really had too little to continue. Next minigame, we gotta cut this lawn while avoiding the bees! Bees, my god. Which I almost failed at. Finished and got the six emeralds. Stupid dance commence. 
Here it's revealed that Eggman is trapped in cyberspace and that he created Sage. These cutscenes seem to come out in between me getting the emeralds and me helping Amy with her side quests. And I collected all of the emeralds I had to before doing Amy's side quests, so I think they're giving them all to me at once. Sage is slowly gaining control of the island, while it looks like she is also getting corrupted with what looks like the same stuff that's slowly affecting Sonic. This is sadly the extent Eggman has in this game. He's never really a threat, and he only appears in the cutscenes. Next scene, we find the two lovers finding each other in what seems to be a flashback. They embrace while bombardments are happening, and they die. Oh no, Sonic Games is getting too dark. Why is this Sonic game getting too dark? They should keep with the cartoony stories. Keep in mind, this is the same franchise that had an evil scientist taking over the world by forcing beings into becoming robots, which was adapted into a cartoon. It, kind of. An ancient creature that destroyed an entire city of a population of over 2 million, who didn't have enough time to evacuate, so a lot of them are definitely dead. A military raid on a space facility that ended in a group of gun soldiers gunning down a 12-year-old girl, with the government covering up the incident. Sonic turning into a werehog and the world splitting apart, a twisted version of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, a game where Eggman almost wins and takes over the world, and the edginess that was Shadow the Hedgehog. The story in Sonic the Hedgehog has always been dark, even like the most silly versions of him. Except like, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, but that was a dark timeline for a different reason. So after doing a puzzle that took longer than I care to admit, we have to fight the Titan. But wait, we only have six out of the seven damn Chaos Emeralds. Well, that's because the seventh one is on top of the Titan. Even though we clearly saw the top of the Titan earlier and it didn't have an Emerald Chamber, but whatevs. We just have to climb up to Giganto? Seriously. Giganto the Great Big Robot, huh? Alright, so we climb up him, again, just like in Shadow of the Colossus, to get the seventh Chaos Emerald. And to turn us into Super Saiyan, I mean Super Sonic. And this is one of the worst parts of the game. That it kind of. The music is fantastic. I immediately have it on my Spotify. I'm to the other side. Why is Sonic music so good? So, like with most of Super Sonic's appearances, you don't take damage, you just slowly lower the ring total until you get zero and die. My biggest problem with this is that it kinda sucks. You have to go and do as much damage as you can with every combo that you can, while dodging his attacks, which hits you even if you were nowhere near it. I think you have to block the attacks, but I just kept trying to dodge it. Anyway, all it does is push you back, which gives him like a second hit because the camera is terrible. Oh yeah, the camera sucks throughout this entire game. Most of the time you can't move it, and I found it stuck to one direction in some areas, making it hard to complete certain tasks. And sometimes, the game forces you into a 2D plane for no fucking reason in the middle of a 3D area. Like, I get it on a stage where the part of the stage is 2D, but in the middle of the open world part? Seriously? And you can't really jump out of it, and towards the end, the islands have so many of these sections, it gets annoying very, very quickly. And also, with the supersonic fights, you're still stuck on a 2D plane, instead of being able to fly up and down and stuff. Anyway, so the first time I was in this boss, I lost, running out of rings, and I got eaten. No, 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 no. And when you lose, you have to climb back up the Titan. So after spinning around a bit, I remembered I could bounce during a combo. And it did a lot more damage to him, actually beating him in less than like five minutes. And I know a lot of people compare Super Sonic to Super Saiyan, and I just want to say that's completely unjust. Sure, Goku turned Super Saiyan a year before Sonic 2 came out. And yeah, sure, the Emeralds used to be six before becoming seven in Sonic 2, like the seven Dragon Balls. Sure, Sonic gets all golden like Goku turning Super Saiyan. Yeah, but that's all coincidence. <laughs> I mean, what's next? Is Sonic gonna kill the Titan exactly how Goku killed King Piccolo? Huh. So, with the Titan down, Amy does a really awkward walk, and Sonic heads off towards the second island, where he loses the Chaos Emeralds. Of course, that would just be too easy. Here, it's basically the same as the last island. This time, instead of Amy, there's Knuckles? How the hell did Knuckles end up here? He's never shown up till now, and Sonic's as surprised as we are. Knuckles, what are you doing here? Y never mind, I'll get you out. Hang on. Well, you would be surprised unless you saw the animated short Sega release before the game came out, which, uh, okay, yeah, it helps explain how he gets here, and I think some of his side story mentions it, and I probably just missed it, 
But my point being that I really wanted to make was you really shouldn't tie your game with an animated short or comic to explain stuff that might be a little vital to know. Kind of like what Mortal Kombat did. Again, I think he does mention it for like a few seconds and I just missed it, so it's not that big of a deal. But it's kind of a pet peeve of mine and I still wanted to mention it. Knuckles seems to be a little bit more militaristic this time around, even down to having to collect medals instead of hearts for him. But overall, it's the same as Amy. Get the emeralds, do some mini games like this one where you have to pick up some cocos. Oh, oh no, oh, I'm so fast, the pillars are slamming down too quickly. What can I do? It's not like the game told me this was going to happen. I oh wait, it does. Man, that would have been really foolish to blame the game for this and act like it's the game's fault. But to be fair, it does become stupidly difficult if you try to collect them all. Which I tried to do because I'm a smartass like that and wanted to see if I can do it in one trip, but yeah. This gets too fast way too quickly. You're better off taking a few trips. I don't even know if it's possible to do it all at once. After a bunch of cutscenes that don't really add any new information, we quickly figure out that the Ancients were a race that was wiped out and they are what the Cocos are. My brother made a connection with them in Chaos, which he was right about. Through the log entries we find that Eggman's made, he made the connection that they're like Chaos, the god of destruction, and in turn, the Chows. Their DNA getting mutated to the point that they change species. Look, all I'm hearing is that Chows can make a comeback. Have them be in the next game. Child care would have made this game a whole lot better. We also find out through Eggman's voice logs that he's actually starting to care about Sage, like a daughter. And it's really sweet, but we're going to talk about Sage later. For now, we have to fight the next boss who is basically the same as the last boss, instead it's flying. Eh, same problems as before. Next island is where we find Tails, and I did a little bit of experimenting and came to a rather interesting conclusion. The portal levels are completely unnecessary. There's one portal level, just one that you need to unlock, and you don't even have to fight a mini boss for the portal keys, because again, you can just find them in the ground sometimes. So you explore this island a bit until you come across this portal with a fish icon on it. There's at least one of these portals in the four islands you need the emeralds for. In this portal you find Big the Cat and his fishing spots. Oh hey Sonic, you come here to fish too? Big, what are you doing here? How did you get here? What even is here? How the hell did he get here? Is he even on this island? Who knows, who cares? If it was explained outside the game, I have no idea. The first time Sonic sees him, Big doesn't really explain how he got here. And Sonic says... Eh, I guess it wouldn't hurt to detense for a second. Literally 10 seconds after telling Amy he doesn't have time to help the Kukos she was helping with. Maybe we should just let them wrap it up on their own. We have to see this through. We still haven't found Tails. We've been wrangling children and taking detours the whole way. Eh. I guess it wouldn't hurt to detense for a second. But this one spot makes this game too easy to complete. So here you can fish and borrow Big's rod. His rod is weird looking and prickly, but with it we can fish. It only costs an X amount of purple tokens with froggy likes. The amount needed change each area. The purple rings can be found throughout the island, or after a while you get a starfall event, where enemies come back. Again, sort of like Breath of the Wilds and meteors fall from the sky. They are everywhere, and when you collect them, the slot machine, because of course a Sonic game has a slot machine in it, starts going. Each meter you collect counts as one go in the slot machine. What sucks is, I didn't know until after I'd beaten the game that you could just stop it with a D-pad. I thought you just had to watch it and let it go. Which was good for the first time, because woo, yeah, oh yeah, 400 tokens, Vegas, baby! I never got that lucky ever again. What I kind of don't like, but I completely understand, is that you only get a few minutes before daybreak and the meteors disappear, along with the ones you collected. So even though I got over 30, it wouldn't continue, making collecting a bunch kind of pointless. But hey, I can play Big's fishing game a lot more and collect more and more tokens. The last area I think is the best, because even though it costs 8 tokens, each time you fish you collect like 8 to 48 tokens with various fish and items. You can also collect Elder Scrolls. Well, Sonic, that's an Elder Scroll. With it, you could read future events. These are needed to get the fast travel options for the Elders. Oh yeah, there's fast travel in this game and it sucks. You have to 100% the island before you can get the ability to fast travel to the different portals on that island. Which, if you ask me, kind of defeats the purpose of fast traveling, unless you have the scrolls, which only lets you go to the Elder Cocos. Fishing is extremely simple. You just press the button, and when the fish bites, then you press it again. And then you have to get it to the red ring, and then press it again, so you can collect various different fishes and items. Wow, a carp! 
You really seized the DM, Sonic. Wow, a goldfish. One token. A flying fish? Too bad I don't give a flying fuck. One token. A tadpole? That's Froggy's brother, you monster! A black bass, the most metal of all fish. Hey, kid, you're a squid now. Oh yeah, sure, just hook an alligator, I'm sure that's safe. Oh look, an alligator snapping turtle. Sure, keep that really close, Sonic. Another carp, now they can carpool. Oh look, the Ten Commandments. Clownfishes are worth two tokens. Yet here you are, doing it for free. A poison dart frog? Go ahead, Sonic. Touch it. Wow, a blue ring octopus. They're one of the most poisonous animals in the world, with no anti-venom. And their bites are so small, you can't tell that you got bit until you die a slow, agonizing death. So, good job, Sonic. Along with that, I think you need to get that free Monster Hunter DLC, but you can also cook meat, which I found a quicker and easier way to get coins. Just wait till the song stops and the meat turns to the right color and BAM! 24 easy tokens. It doesn't even cost purple tokens. It's free. Just make sure you're not a second off cause you'll either burn it or undercook it somehow. And the big surprise is the fucking bass is fucking raw! What the fuck is going on? You can also collect other items from Sonic's past. Man, this lake is polluted. Just spread the word, give a hoot, don't pollute, and if you see litter, please, pick it up, cause if you don't give a hoot, who will? Plus treasure chests with one to three tickets, which gives you an item for free. Like the audio logs and the cocos. Yeah, Big is just holding them hostage. This makes collecting everything a joke. You don't really need to get the portal keys or the memory tokens, since again, you can just find them out in the field. What you should get is the Chaos Keys. You can literally farm all the keys you need for that island right here, which I did for the third and final island. Halfway through the second island, I stopped doing the portal levels. This fishing minigame makes those portal levels completely pointless outside of like 100% completion. If you're just playing through the story mode, you don't need to play them. I also use this to get all the skill seeds to max my power and defense, which I did on island two. Hell, this even makes collecting cocos a joke as well, since you can just trade them till it's sold out. And on the last island, you can kind of just keep buying them. I kind of did the math. You need about 1,200 cocos, give or take, to fully level up rings or speed, given if it stays 12 consistently. So I need like 2,400 cocos. At the end of the last big fishing spot, I had over 5,000 of these guys. I hated collecting them so much, I made sure that I did it. And you know what? While I'm at it, fuck the Koroks too. It took almost an hour to 100 both speed and rings. And it's not like speed made me feel like I was going faster. Before it felt like Sonic was being purposely held back and now that I'm leveled all the way up he just feels a little bit less restrained. You can change his speed in the options menu for some reason, but on default I should still feel fast, right? Yeah, maybe it only affects stages. Here I also got the auto combat talent, which is basically the win button. See, before I got away with just using Sonic Boom, just jump and hold the button down to shoot some beams. Took most enemies out right away. And with auto combo, Sonic now does his higher damaging combos I couldn't get to work properly because combos was kind of hard to pull off with the speed and stuff. But it also makes the next boss a total joke. But before that, now we have to save Tails. One of the things I love about this story is that it shows that all the games are connected. Well, almost. Sonic 06 is never mentioned, I don't think. But they do make several references to all the other 3D games. Even 2D, because Knuckles gets a flashback to Sonic 3. They even made Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic Riders canon because Eggman mentions the Black Arms and the Babylonians. The bird guys from Sonic Riders, not the actual ancient civilization. I think. Are they connected with the bird guys? And Eggman's buttons actually have a purpose? What? When? How? Why? Anyway, Tails even mentions the other games, talking about how he felt useless when Infinite attacks Sonic and Sonic Forces, and overall thinking that he's a burden. Sonic is kind of a dick about it. Sonic, am I a burden to you? Wow, and how did you come to this well thought out concern? And also, really Tails? You stopped Eggman from firing a nuke! Hey, who was it who stopped Eggman from blowing up Station Square, huh? See, Sonic gets it and Wait a minute. Tails was eight during Sonic Adventures. 
How long ago was that? Is it safe to assume it was like over 20 years ago? Like 10 maybe? How old is Tails? How old is Sonic? Did all these Sonic games happen in like two years? That's crazy if that's true. Why would you open up this can of worms without thinking of the consequences? I'm gonna be up all night thinking about this. Ugh, quickly, gotta think of something else before my head explodes. Anyway, Sonic and Tails' interactions are really nice. In fact, all the interactions here are fantastic. They even hint at Tails getting his own spin-off game. Yeah, this whole experience gave me a kind of clarity. When this is all over, I think I need to go it alone for a while. I can't grow into my full potential if I always fall back on you. You hear that, guys? Tails and the Music Maker is getting a remake! Next minigame before the Titan is a fucking pinball level, god damn it! You have to get 5 million points and it takes forever and if you lose you have to reset. Damn it, I knew they were gonna connect Sonic Spinball somehow. Next Titan and this one sucks too. You have to ride a shield towards him and these missiles just come at you and I don't know how to fucking dodge them at all. Again, the music is fantastic. But I finally got Auto Combo which made this fight a fucking joke. Alright, just gotta hold back the blade, and I accidentally pressed a different button, whoops. Now I gotta do all this shit again! But this time it was even quicker. Thanks to Auto Combo, it only took like a minute and a half. Next island is just Exposition Island. Sonic has to shut down the six towers, each time getting more and more backstory to the Ancients and what happened. I'll give you a quick rundown and try to summarize it the best I can. The Ancients were an advanced alien race from another planet that was attacked by something called the End. How original. Fleeing their planet's destruction, they used the Chaos Emeralds, which they originally had, to lead them to Earth where the Master Emerald is. Using the Emeralds, they power up their Titans in a mecha-like team, so yeah, like Evangelion or Gundam to defeat the End when it arrives. And they failed. With their Titan leader absorbing the End to keep it sealed, killing him in the process, and the rest sacrificing themselves to put the End in cyberspace. And Sonic unknowingly let the End out, who turns out to be the voice that was talking to us throughout the entire game. And he got corrupted and frozen. The locks are broken. Now I shall tear down the walls between dimensions and consume all. But Sonic's friends, now out of cyberspace, Care Bear hug him or some shit and sacrifice their lives to save him. I think that's what that was, they disappeared and don't show up again until the end. And now Eggman's here! Uh, he somehow got out? I have no idea how, maybe Sonic accidentally let him out. Now we're on the last island! After fishing a bit and getting the keys and memories that we need, we can get the emeralds again. This island, we talk to Sage, who we can talk to on the other islands as well, but she becomes a main thing here. Sage, I think, is one of my favorite characters. She has so much story put into her, even though this is the first time she appeared. Over her interactions, she starts becoming more and more sentient, I think, and starts wanting a family, seeing Eggman as her father, and in turn, all of his robots as her brother. You'll be a refreshing change of pace from Orbach and Jubach. They are your creations, like me. That would make them like... my brothers? Hmm. I suppose so. I look forward to that. Meaning Metal Sonic is her brother and I want them to interact. And when she starts turning good, I think she's turning good, her color scheme goes from black and red to white and blue. Somehow, I don't actually know why. I know she might not technically count as a villain because she quote unquote turns good at the end. But I know more about Sage in this game than I do Chaos, Infinite, those idiots from Lost World, and possibly everyone Sonic faces in the games. Let me real quick compare her to Chaos. Yes, Chaos shows up throughout Avengers. Kind of, he shows up, eats an emerald, and you either fight him or he just walks away. He's never really seen as a threat because they don't do anything with him until the end. And his backstory was all over the fucking place and makes no sense because each character gets random bits on it and they don't talk about it. Here, Sage interacts with you throughout the game, and you actually know what she is and how she feels, and you can see her as a bit of a threat with her controlling the Titans and is able to control most of cyberspace. Plus, we know her as a character through the cutscenes of her and Eggman, while we also know exactly what happened with the Ancients, their story being told to us in proper order and equally given to us. And that is my biggest problem I have with Sonic Frontiers. The story is great. We just don't have enough of it. I wish this game was a little bit longer. 
I wish there was more of a story to it. Again, the story is good. The best Sonic has had in recent times, maybe in all of his games. I just wish there was more to this. What is your end goal? Uh, it varies. Sometimes it's a spinning sign, sometimes it's a big old ring. No. <laughs> anyway, we get six emeralds and Eggman shows up with the last damn Chaos Emerald. Yeah, thanks for the help, Fatso. Now we gotta fight Supreme. Again, with 999 rings and auto combo, this was extremely easy. But the fight's not over yet. The end is heading towards space to finish what started. Sonic rushes towards him with Sage right behind him taking the Supreme Titan after having a heartfelt goodbye to Eggman. All we did was chase it out of its shell. It's retreating into space to regain its true form. Even Super Sonic won't be able to stop it. I know what I must do. I must... leave you. I understand. Go. Fulfill your function. You... stay. I... go. No... following. Be careful, dear daughter. Aww. And Sage then sacrifices herself. And with that, she's dead. Please look after father. Or is she? Father? That's my girl. Again, the game story is pretty good. I think it's like the best one they've had in a while. And that's probably because Ian Flynn, the current head writer of the comics and has been the head writer for a long while, wrote for Sonic Frontiers. I would say for a first attempt at an open world game, this is a very, very solid first attempt. But unfortunately, I don't think it's worth 10 out of 10. I don't really do a 10 out of 10 score except for like my quick reviews. But if I had to, I would say this would be like a solid 8 which is still great on my score. Not a lot of games are 9s or 10s on mine personally. Again, while the story is great, the gameplay holds it back a bit. The island exploration is pretty lame, and you can just skip all the portal levels by fishing for the chaos keys. The enemies you fight aren't that great, I don't even remember some of them. And the new combat system definitely needs to be reworked a bit before it's good. But the music is great. The graphics are pretty good, except for like some items popping in, which yeah, might not be that great, but I don't think it was that bad. And considering how it was only 60 people that worked on this game, which I know sounds like a lot, but for AAA games like Sonic, this is a very low number. Some AAA games have up to 600 people, maybe even more working on it. Open world games require around the 500 range, I believe. Plus with COVID, that work became much, much harder. So yeah, I do recommend this game. I thought it was really good, but I think they can do much, much better. The music is great, and again, almost every Sonic game has good music. And they do hint at sequels towards the end. Amy even mentions Sticks from Sonic Boom. Uh, does that mean Sonic Boom is canon? Uh, maybe just Sticks is, hopefully. And Tails also mentions going off on an adventure as well. You're gonna hardly recognize me when we see each other again. Again. And Knuckles? Well, he's just gonna sit on his island, I guess. I heard Sega say they were going to use this as like testing to see how they can improve and make a better Sonic game. And I really hope they take some of the criticisms to heart and make the game better. Please share your thoughts of the game down in the comments section. I would like to hear your opinions on this as well. And if you have like a game or a movie you would like to see me review, mention it in the comments as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. It'll really help me out in the algorithm. And subscribe to my channel. That way you can get notifications of when my next videos are out. And it also helps me in the long run. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, you guys take care.